pathless wilderness, wild, rugged. That was the Black Hills of South Dakota in the early 1870s. A hardy frontier, far from the paths of civilization, where fortune beckoned with a glittering smile and life hung on the quickness of a trigger finger. There was gold in them, thar hills. Gold at Spring Creek, gold at Crook City, gold at Central City, gold on the mountains, in the rivers, and in the dark depths far below the surface of the earth. For centuries uncounted, men have sought, fought, and died for gold, as they did in the Black Hills when the West was young. Brave men came from the North, the East, the South, the West, by the tens, the hundreds, the thousands. They tunneled the mountainside, they combed the gulches, they strained the rivers, creeks, and streams in their wild quest for gold. But the romantic day of the placer miner was short-lived. No more could gold be washed from the coarse gravel of the creek beds. The placers were worked out. The bewhiskered pioneer with pick, shovel, and gold pan had served his day. And that day he served well, for he set the stage for a greater era and new industry destined to take its place with agriculture in South Dakota. Among the men who sought for gold in those daring days was Moses Manuel. He was interested in the scientific mining of hard rock formation getting gold out of quartz ore so hard it could not be chipped by a miner's pick. Manuel and his party prospected the winter of 1875 without success. And then, on April 9th, 1876, they discovered a ledge, an outcropping of ore that then was termed a lead. They sank their discovery shaft in the side of a draw, and they called it Homestake Lead and the mining camp which leaped to life took the name of Lead City. The original site of the Homestake mine has disappeared and in its place has risen a thriving industry geared to modern progress. Today, Lead is still a mining camp, but a mining camp with 20th century trimmings. The Homestake mine is still there, for Lead is Homestake and Homestake is Lead. But mining in the glamorous days of yore is a far cry from the complicated and scientific methods in use today. It takes more than a pick and shovel to get gold ore out of the ground now, and more than a gold pan to get the gold out of the ore. Would you like to mine for gold? Today, gold mining means raw materials, men and construction, combined with the science of chemistry and the wonders of modern engineering all of which are necessary to make homestake or pay. New construction, which will take two years at a cost of about three million dollars to complete. This complex steel structure, the head frame, rises from a man-made mountaintop plateau to reach nearly 150 feet skyward. In this massive building, made with more than 800,000 bricks, steel and concrete, Giant equipment will control the hoisting and lowering of cages which carry men and materials. This model of the Yates shaft shows what has to be done. The great construction work underground, blasted out of solid rock, but it isn't done from the top down. The shafts are cut from the bottom up. Tunnels, or drifts as the miners call them, are blasted from the solid rock to connect old workings with the exact location of the new shaft. Then the latter moves upward in many separate segments or links which one by one are merged into a single vertical opening. Precision engineering makes sure the drifts meet the new shaft at the right places. But it's not as easy as that. Opening up a level and placing it in proper condition for mining requires many months of work, drilling, blasting, ditching, hauling waste rock. More than three and one-half million feet of timber, or enough to build more than 200 five-room houses, go into the shaft. This drift leads to one of the ore bodies. Two years to finish the job. Hundreds of men at work under the ground, on the surface, high in the air. Two years of work through the toughest kind of rock. Millions of feet of timber. Hundreds of tons of concrete and steel. Thousands upon hundreds of thousands of dollars for equipment. 
before one single ton of ore can be taken out. That's what gold mining is today. Where is that old time pick and shovel now? The new Yates plant, when complete, will look like this several million dollar Ross plant built in 1934 with a shaft where operations are now being conducted on many levels. The levels are spaced 100 feet apart down to 1100 feet. Then 150 feet apart to the bottom of the mine. Now we're after gold. Down we go. 8 1. Eight, That's the signal we heard a moment ago. The marvels of shortwave radio used for safety in the mining of gold ore. These great and powerful drums, each holding more than a mile of stout steel hoisting cable in one layer, wind and unwind rapidly as the cages speed up and down the shaft, carrying their cargo to a safe haven. Vertical transportation, lowering human cargo over 4,000 feet into the earth, four times as deep as the height of the Empire State Building. Flashes of light are levels. An indicating arm is geared with micrometer fineness and tells the operator exactly where the cage is at all times. 3,650 feet, 3,800 feet, 3,950 feet. 4,100 feet below the surface, at a speed more than three times as fast as a modern elevator, in perfect safety. Over 2,000 men work for Homestake. The miners work in two shifts, which are rotated, changes in hours for every man. At Homestake, safety is a first consideration. Helmets of light material tougher than steel, work lamps with a battery to keep them lighted for eight hours, steel-toed shoes with spiked soles for safety. But above all, it is the thorough understanding of their job and an unfailing observance of safety practices on the part of the men themselves that have brought the home stake record to its remarkably low accident rate. Prospecting, shaft sinking, drifting, raising, cross-cutting, diamond drilling, all preliminary to actual mining of the ore. Here's the air-driven diamond drill outlining the gold-bearing rock. Gold ore is mined by two methods, the shrinkage stope method without timber and the square set method with timber. These miners are climbing into a stope from which the ore is being removed by the shrinkage method. Shrinkage stope mining consists of breaking ore away from solid rock. As the roof of the opening or stope becomes higher, the miners use the broken ore as a platform on which to work. Loose rock hanging overhead is pried off with long steel bars. Miners call this barring down. 